Now we're going to concentrate on the instrument panel. I warn you, this is a process that requires a lot of research before you even get started, but I'm going to take it step by step and do it a way that you don't have to do any prep work or anything like that. You just take whatever X-Plane has to offer, you drop it in, and you work with that. And I'm not going to do the whole cockpit uh, in one tutorial because it would just take too long. I think if I give you some basic uh, methods and ideas, I think you can go on on your own. So the cockpit maker has several areas here that I'd like to make you aware of. One area is the instrument list where whenever you click on one of these things, you get a picture, some information, some properties that you can change, and all that stuff. Here we will have a list that gets populated as we drag instruments into the plane. I'm going to start out with the primary flight display, the PFD, and I, can, I found a pretty clear picture of it here that gives me a lot of information. I have the artificial horizon here, I have a wind speed indicator there, an airspeed indicator here, an altitude indicator here, vertical speed indicator, you get the idea. There's a lot of information here that I can draw from. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in a background, sort of like a screen panel, and I'm not going to expect to find something that is exactly like the one pictured here. I'm just going to drag in one that looks similar, something generic. So first thing I do is I'm probably going to find it here under panels, and I get the preview image there. This one looks pretty similar. It looks similar enough to me, so I'll drag it in. Next, I'm going to try and position it according to what I see here. Let's zoom out a little bit on it to get a little more perspective. So we have the bottom edge there where there's no more instruments. I think I'll drag it a little more towards the middle because I know that, the, that this cockpit has some stuff on this side here too. So an initial position, I would say this is okay. Later on, we can reposition it if we need to. Okay, first thing I want to do then is drag in the artificial horizon. I don't know which one the Embraer uses, but I'm just going to drag one in for now and uh, drop it in here. And I can fine tune it with the arrow keys. I can push it up and down sideways, and I can even resize it. But let me just go ahead and drag in the other parts of this uh, thing that I know about. I'll drag in the airspeed indicator and the altitude indicator. Once they're in and once you've dropped them, the moment you click on them and drag them again, you get some positioning lines that show up. And those help you center according to different criteria. So that red line that showed up up there just basically told me that now the tops of these two items are lined up. So let's see where this one lines up. Oh, okay. I want to line it up between those two, and I want it to snap right into the middle of, of those. Um, and I want to drag this one a little closer to the artificial horizon. All right, so far so good. Next, we're looking for the HSI, Horizontal Situation Indicator. This looks pretty similar to what I just saw in that picture online. That's that thing that we were looking at. Adaptive, Vertical Velocity Indicator. I think that's the one I want. Mm. Yeah, this is. I think this is the one we want here. Next, let's see Vertical Velocity Indicator. If we have anything like that here, this is pressure indicator. I think that comes with that instrument that we... I know that this is wind direction, so let's see if I can find that wind direction uh, widget, I guess I could call it. Maybe I'll find it here in the supplements sublist. Oh, airspeed trend. This arrow points up or down to indicate that your airspeed is increasing or decreasing respectively. No, that's not what I want. Barometric pressure. Let's see if we have that here somewhere. Maybe. Let's just... Just for the sake of trying it out in the sim, we can always delete it later on. We can always drag this in here. And, oh, if I want to zoom, I can just use my scroll wheel. And wherever the mouse pointer is located, that's where I'm going to be zooming in on. There's a flap indicator. I know that that's not part of this screen. The gear indicator isn't either. Glide slope. I've seen the glide slope in other planes be indicated right here. I'm not 100% positive about this, but uh, we'll have to... Okay, ground speed. I saw that here somewhere. Yeah, it's right down there. So drag it down there. And heading. This number is your compass heading in degrees. That's right down there. So we drag that in there. So you see it all depends on a good uh, research that you've done on the internet. If you find one good image, you can start assembling your cockpit accordingly. Course deviation indicator. Hmm, interesting. I've seen that one in other planes, right below here. 
you can tell I'm not a cockpit expert, but uh, we live in the digital age, so doing, doing research on this stuff is not a hard thing. You've got Google at your disposal, and you can easily type in any questions that you have about this stuff. And Wikipedia also has lots of answers, so I encourage you to do that if you get stuck. Orbital, that's not for planes. Radio altimeter, I've seen that around here somewhere. RA stands for radio altimeter. So I'm going to drag that into position right here. Heading 1. I think that's part of this instrument here. And the wind indicator, this looks like it could be that thing up there. So let's drag that up there. Oh, it's a little big. Now we can resize it a little bit. Just type into the size here, point, maybe 6. Yeah, that's good enough. You know what? I know where the green one is for this. It's under the HUD, the HUD. Basically, you'll see all these green outlined things on the on the heads-up display. Okay, here we have ascension trend, thrust vector, wind. This is the indicator that I was looking for. So I'll replace it. I'll replace this one with that one. Still have to reduce it in size, though. 0.6. It looks to me like we've pretty much got it. this particular instrument assembled. Okay, so now that we have this one instrument, uh, at least it's arranged properly, even if the graphics aren't right. We can always tweak those graphics later in Photoshop. You can actually take every single one of these instruments and uh, modify them and alter them in Photoshop to look more like the plane you're actually trying to model. But that's not covered in this particular tutorial. Here I'm just teaching you how to do generic stuff uh, so that you can find your way around the cockpit builder with relative ease. Um, there's one more thing down here. It's the uh, side slip indicator. I want to see if I can find that here. It's probably under the standard six turn slip. We have a complete turn slip. Oh, okay, this is starting to look more like it. Heavy metal. Hmm. Yeah, that looks pretty similar to what we see in the Embraer cockpit. Let's drag that in place there. It doesn't stick out at the bottom, so I'll have to drag it up a little bit. And then we have the barometric pressure knob. It's probably going to be under rheostats. Barrel. That's not the look I'm going for. I think the black one is more like it. We'll just drag this one here. And let's see what else we can do. Yeah, I think that's all I can tell from this image. So let's go ahead and save this and test it out in the simulator. Okay, ideally while you're working on the cockpit, you'll have both Plane Maker and X-Plane running at the same time. But that requires a lot of resources from your computer. So while I'm screen capturing, I can't really do that. Okay, so here's some answers to my questions. I have the barometric pressure indicator here, which is, um, I was hoping that that would be part of this strip look, but it wasn't. So that's fine. I dragged in an extra instrument for, for that. This is where you can always test, uh, see here's where you adjust the barometric pressure in order to uh, give you the, uh, the right altitude for the location that you're currently at, at the air pressure that you're currently at. So that's just a setting for the altitude indicator. And the rest of the instrument looks fine. You can take the plane up in the air, test it a little bit, make sure everything works. Now the one thing that's problematic about this particular cockpit is that you have, a, you have to do a lot of scrolling in order to uh, get the get the full perspective of what you see here. So you can't see both the sky and your instruments. That's a problem we'll have to deal with with some adjustments that I can show you a little later on. For example, you can have the default screen be more like this, so have this whole panel scrolled up a little bit by default so you can see more of the instrument panel. And then if you really want to access the ceiling panels here, you're going to have to hit the up arrow. I'll show you how to do that in a more advanced tutorial. But for now, this is how you would make the rest of the instruments. If you get stuck, uh, Google it or see if there's some resources online. And the explain.org forum oftentimes has resources that can help you with this. That's all I'll be covering about the panel for now. I'm going to be concentrating on doing paint schemes uh, in the next tutorial. I will come back and show you advanced cockpit layout sometime down the line uh, when I get around to it.